Yes, thank you. I'm honored to, to be here to represent the uh, European Party of Ukraine. Its leader, uh, Mykola Katerinchuk, is now in battalion number 126, territorial defense in Kiev. He was not able to come. Uh, we talked to him for a long time last night. We talk quite regularly. And, uh, but before presenting his suggestions and the plan that uh, the European Party of Ukraine is, uh, is, is going to propose, I want to say a few words about myself because uh, I'm really not, uh, I, I am new in politics, very, very, very new. I am a reporter. I was born in Lithuania, um, uh, and I didn't see very many members of my family because they died in Holocaust. Uh, my father fought in the Red Army, and he was in Berlin on May 9th, 1945. So basically, I grew up with images of the Second World War. My children are Italian, and they are born, I mean, I, I lived many, many years in Florence, and, 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 and they are Florentine, and our understanding of history is quite different. And it is going to be for me, now I'm going to meet them uh, in the coming days, I haven't seen them since the beginning of the war, I'm going to try and explain to them what's happening in Ukraine, and what future they might be facing. They're in their 30s, and I don't have grandchildren, and I would like to have grandchildren. And I don't know what to tell them. Uh, I've seen in my journalistic life, I've seen a lot of tragedies. I covered the war in Afghanistan from the Mujahideen side, and I saw the refugees, I saw the Mujahideen die, uh, I saw real courage in fighting the Soviet invasion. I saw the Indian mosquitoes who were victims of the Sandinista regime in Nicaragua. I saw the Libyan invasion in Chad. I saw the war in ex-Yugoslavia. I covered all the wars in the former Soviet Union, I mean, from Tajikistan, Chechnya, Ossetia, and Ingushetia, etc., etc. I've seen a lot of human tragedies. And I never expected, as any one of us, that it could repeat itself. I think that as I was covering these wars and seeing human tragedies, for me as a European, it was, it was, it, it, I was happy, I was honored seeing how the European Union was developing. Because finally we got a political union that was defending those values which we have dreamt of and in a certain way we're struggling for. And now everything that we have done in those decades and everything that we have understood during those times is in danger. It may disappear in one second. That's what happened in Ukraine. All the hopes have been shattered. And now I think we have to do everything we can and sacrifice everything we can to do so that Ukraine survives, that this society survives, and Ukraine is really, it shows by its courage, by the desire to defend the values, that it is part of a European family, it is part of NATO family. And there is no doubt about this. Now I'll get to what uh, Mykola Katerinchuk is proposing and what and I support it absolutely. But before that, I'll tell you a story which I myself cannot explain. So his battalion, number 126, they have ordered uh, bulletproof jackets and helmets in, to French company. They have done 100% forward payment, and the money came back because the company that was producing said that the French central bank does not accept transactions with Russia and Ukraine, which is very strange. But it happened. It happened, and he was telling me that. 
And now they're doing the same kind of operation, trying to get basically jackets and helmets. It's defense. It's not lethal method, weapons. It's, it's just civil defense. They're doing it for a private person so that he can pay and it will come. It will take much longer. They have a corridor to, to, to get it, but it, it, it will just take a lot of time. Why I'm telling this story or why he was telling me that? We have to have a comprehensive European Union plan to fight Russian and Belarusian fascism. Because there is no doubt what we are dealing with. In a certain way, I don't know, Madeleine Albright died yesterday. Maybe she didn't want to see what's going to happen. Before dying, she wrote a book, Fascism warning. Fascism is not an ideology. Fascism is a process, she said. It's a bully with an army. And now we see it. We see it in action. So a comprehensive European plan fighting fascism, that is that European Union has adopted a strong package, a very important package of sanctions. Now, we have to close all the possible loopholes. Russia and Belarus have to be economically and financially isolated from the civilized Western world. They are not part of us. Their governments are not part of us. What their way of thinking and their way of doing and the way they resort to violence is not acceptable. It is not in harmony with our values and our way of life. Uh, I worked in Russia for many years. I created a program which was called Freedom of Speech. Uh, and after the hostage crisis, which you remember very well, where Mr. Putin decided to save hostages by using gas, uh, and this was the time that I understood that this person, I don't know, it's, it's even, you know, it's very difficult for me. I know it's not, it's not politically correct to say that, but it's very difficult for me to define him as a human being. Uh, I had a huge conflict then, and I was forced to leave Russia. And uh, Boris Nemtsov, the late Boris Nemtsov, whom we miss so much, especially now, he had that bright idea of um, suggesting me to go to work to Ukraine. Then I came to Ukraine and worked 15 years in Ukraine and continue doing so. Uh, and I'm honored to represent the Ukrainian party today here. I repeat that again. And I have a lot of Russian friends, my colleagues. And I'll tell you that there is a new narrative now on Russian state television. Uh, we don't feel it, they feel it, and they'll, they tell it to me. The last two and a half days is going an incredible ideological attack on Poland. As if, I mean, what was happening on the eve of invasion of Ukraine, that ideological prepara preparation, that, 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 that you know, brainwashing of, 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 of the Russian people, uh, now is happening with Poland. The topic number one, we are going to punish Poland. And we all understand what that means. Second thing which I was told by my Russian colleagues, that the children of a Russian elite, those who are under san sanctions, they travel, they sort of, you know, they continue living a happy life, more or less. What do they think? They think that this is going to be over soon, like in Georgia, more or less in 2008, and all their privileges are going to come back. They have to understand, every member of the elite, every Russian, they have to understand that nothing is going to come back. Nothing is going to be as before. They are not going to live those privileged lives in the future because of what they've done. I understand it's very difficult. It's very difficult to accuse people, and we tend to accuse regimes. But the Russian soldiers are people. 
they have mothers, they have fathers, and they are shooting Ukrainian civilians, Ukrainian women. They are raping Ukrainian women. They are destroying Ukrainian villages. They are behaving like, sorry, but it's true, they are behaving like the Nazis behaved in 1941. So, coming back to the plan of Mykola Ukaterinchuk, uh, we are ready, the European Party of Ukraine, to create a working group to make suggestions, really, to have that comprehensive plan of fighting with fascism, Russian and Belarusian fascism. And uh, we are ready to present a thesis uh, so, and have an open discussion about it. That's his message, and I'm very happy to, to convey it to you. Uh, and another thing I wanted to tell you, which I think, I know Mr. Putin a little bit, not much, but I worked, worked under his regime. I think Putin has a dream. May 9th, day of victory, he sacralized the war he never participated in. And this May 9th, it's just after Orthodox Easter. And you know that Kiev is the mother of all Russian cities. That Orthodoxy was born in Kiev. And I'm very much afraid, knowing this, pers this, 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 this president of Russia, that he would really like to have a victory parade and Easter celebration in Kiev. That's his dream. How he is going to achieve it, difficult to say. But when President Biden started talking about chemical weapons, that really is worrying. President of the United States, as we understand it all now, doesn't tell things which are not realistic. And that is my greatest fear, that Putin is not going to stop and he is going to use anything at his disposal to have that May 9th parade of victory in Kiev. And I think that this date we have to keep in mind. That's right.